invariably provides great overtaking in this category, especially when the field employs split strategies like yesterday. It's another bright day here, super conditions as the crowd filters in ahead of the Grand Prix this afternoon. Right now, we have all eyes on Formula 2, and rightly so, after yesterday's race. It's time to close out the second round of the 2017 FIA F2 season. I'm your commentator, Alex Jakes, and I've got another one alongside me. Davide Valsaki, wonderful to have your company once again. Yesterday was all about Charles Leclerc. I want to get your early thoughts on how impressed you've been with him this season. Ciao, Alex. It's a pleasure. Yesterday, Charles Leclerc, he was perfect. He was quick. He was conserving the tires very well, but the talent that he showed on the overtakes was something really supreme. Really well drive for him. It was a spectacular race. Today will be not easy, starting from the eighth position. Artem Markalov is on the reverse grid pole. He scored the fastest lap of the race yesterday, so he does have good pace on the hard tyres. Gustav Malley was a beneficiary of that safety car timing. Then we've got Nicholas Latifi ahead of Alexander Albon, another man that looked really strong on that hard Pirelli tyre. Matushiti's teammate just behind, and the man I think you've got to watch if he gets a good start today, Oli Rowland, who was the class of the field on the harder of the Pirelli rubber. Luca Giotto finished second. We were talking about the impressive performance of Charles Leclerc a moment ago. Jordan King gave it everything to try and get reverse grid pole, but unfortunately, there's nothing he could do. And he starts ninth to freeze struggle with tyre wear in 11th. Louis Delatras was so annoyed to be punted round by Johnny Chicotto, and he will go from 11th. Ralph Boschong thought he'd scored his first points in Formula 2, not to be a penalty, dropped him out, and he starts 12th. Antonio Fuoco has been driving around hitting things this weekend. He'll hope that that's not the case from an unlucky 13th. Kamara goes from 14th, Galeo 15th, Norman Nato having a disastrous time in a race where he was successful at uh, a few uh, years ago. In fact, Johnny Chicotto has won around here before. Nabil Jeffrey going to attack with everything he's got, he said. And then we have Roberto Meri standing in for Stefano Coletti. Sergio Canamassas, whose retirement led to the safety car, which changed the complexion of the race, really. Uh, <laughs> Well, confusing behavior from him. He said one day he'll explain it. Maybe he needs quite a bit of time to explain quite what was going on there. We've seen Gustav Malia, who's gonna, who scored points yesterday for racing engineering to make up for a terrible Bahrain, but it's the Dams guys. Oli Rowland and this man right here, the Canadian Nicholas Latifi, who look a real threat in the early spring, uh, the early summer sunshine here in Barcelona. Well, look at that wonderful, wonderful place to watch the race. And it's going to be really entertaining now because less of a focus on degradation. No worry about running both the compounds. It's a shorter race distance, 26 laps. And Alexander Albon, apart from Ollie Rowland, looked really, really strong. He thought he could have won before the safety car was deployed. He also sent his congratulations, as did this man, Tanaire Fukuzumi, who was successful in yesterday's GP3 race. Matsushita needs another strong weekend to get back, to get momentum. He can't be, at this stage of his career, being beaten with Albon in front of him, especially with another driver in the young Honda driver program going so well in GP3. So, Markolov definitely has the speed, but so does this man. Absolutely the class of the field on the tyre that they're running today. He said he was so pleased, Ollie Rowland, with the pace. It's only really qualifying that is a problem. Driving these cars, the one lap pace compared to the tyre management, is something that you need to get your head around. It's something that the dams team know oh so well around this circuit. Yeah, you're right. It's completely different. The approach to the driving style on the racing distance, you have to conserve the tyres, trying to avoid the, the wheel spin at the exit of the slow corner. Yesterday, Rollo was perfect because at the end of the first hint, it was the quickest. At the end of the race with the fresh tyres, it was the quickest. So it should be really good today fighting for something important. Oli Roland also making the point that he thought race control had gone down the route of not deploying the full safety car unless they absolutely needed to. He was a little bit miffed about that, and you can understand it, because Charles Leclerc, who was our winner yesterday, thought that Roland might have had the pace to beat him. He was certainly very, very worried about that in the middle part of the race. Gustav Malia knows how to score a podium in a reverse grid race. That's exactly what he did for Trident. 
back in Spa in this machinery last year. He's looking for his first podium today in Formula 2 to improve a season for racing engineering that got off to a pretty ropey start in Bahrain. Really important for him the start because he's starting on the inside line in the second position so he can have a really good chance to attack the first position of Markelov at the first corner. And here will be interesting to see the battle at the first lap. Exit of corner four, breaking in downhill to corner five. Always understeer. We saw some good overtakes yesterday. Will be interesting also today. You see Leclerc ahead of Luca Giotto in the standings. They are one and two after three races in this championship. Luca Giotto said he tried everything on that first lap, but unfortunately damaged the tire in the process. It was that move at turn four that we thought he'd taken the lead with, but he hadn't. And crucially, that damaged the front of his tire, which compromised him. But I don't think he ever had the race pace, certainly not the race pace that we were expecting him to have in relationship to the prima car so that will be interesting to see so from one russian time who was figuring at the front to another markalov very very impressive and the start is going to be crucial here because you get the feeling that if markalov can get away into the lead he's been talking about the maturity he feels he has now he has developed in his four years in this machinery someone who struggled an awful lot but the start is going to be crucial for this man because if he can get himself within the top three, you can see how relaxed he is, just flexing the fingers, warming the brakes, warming the tyres. He's very relaxed out of the car, Ollie Rowland. He's very to the point, and he's also very quick. So tell me, Davide, Dam's the team that you've raced with. They know their stuff inside out. They're also the winners of the GP2 sprint race this time last year, which was won by Alex Lynn won by Alex then two years in a row in fact he started off the front row on both occasions he was fourth when he won in 2015 he was third when he won last year and that will give real hope to Oli Roland yeah Damsa has to prove a bit on the performance of the single lap time in quality but they have always a good car in the race so Roland and also Latifi yesterday they were really competitive I'm looking forward to see them really competitive today also so this is going to be fascinating to see because Bahrain is an unusual circuit with the traction zones and the difference in tires we saw a pit stop to win the sprint race we won't see that today what we will see though is 20 fantastic drivers attacking this racetrack as Canamassas gets into position as the final car. So are we going to get a better read about the pace this weekend? The safety car compromised the race yesterday, but it's going to be lights to flag today with three lights on the gantry, four, five, and in Barcelona. The sprint race is underway for a really poor start for Markov. He's barely got off the line and straight into the lead goes Nicholas Latifi. Wow, like a rocket into the lead. And Malia is getting a decent start. He's going to take second position. Markov's been engulfed from reverse grid pole. He's way down the order. A disaster for him. We said, could he get off and into the lead? He couldn't. And now we've got Alban all over the road racing Markov through turn number three. A disaster for the Russian time driver who has been a race winner, Kanamasas. He's going very wide indeed as Alvin thinks about a move on Giotto down the inside. And it's Roland and King who find themselves very close to going. Roland on the attack. Roland knows he's got to make it work in the early stages. Getting very racy down the inside of Alvin. Does he have the traction on the opening lap? Giotto finding himself in a decent position. But Alvin with really good drive off the corner as had Leclerc. Dream start for Nicolas Latifi in the Canadian is ahead. And then Matthew Sheeta. We've got a car off in the background there who spun. I stalled. I stalled. And so Ralph Boschung has stalled and we've got contact there. Well, it's Fogo again. Down there, I don't believe it. He's hit someone else. Or maybe he's been here. I don't want to judge until we've seen it. But another incident for Antonio Fuoco. As we see Markalov there battling with Leclerc. And Leclerc just about holding him off. Markalov from first to ninth. And we have a safety car deployed so we can catch our breath. Dream star for Latifi. Disaster for Artem Markalov. Yeah, you're right. Look, the safety car is in at the moment, so the group will be uh, close up all together. Markelov had a disaster start, but ah, Fuoco, Antonio Fuoco again today. He's trying to restart the car. Not easy. And he's there. No. 
We are out to freeze. They are being pushed off. That is the problem with an opening lap through turns uh, seven and eight. It really can fall away from you pretty quickly. It is single track through there. And if you don't take it single track, you're going to be in trouble. On board with Sergio Canamassas, we might be able to see what went wrong between the two of them. They were fighting there. And that was over ambitious. It was not Antonio Fuoco hitting someone that time. It was Nick De Vries, so apologies to the young Italian driver. De Vries being far too ambitious down the inside. Disappointing for him, disappointing for Fuoco, who, and I don't mean this unkindly, I think he will be quite relieved that he doesn't have to do any more laps around this circuit. It's just not been his weekend. Problems in practice, not ideal with a DRS there. Difficulty in qualifying, a difficult race. And now, with his teammate winning, he's going to find himself out of the points in the second race. But anyway, not a great choice fighting in corner seven, but uh, have a look to the start because Markinov missed it. But look Latifi, how good it was of the pull off from the from the place. Wow, was was extreme. One of the best starts I ever seen from Latifi. Look. No, I was just watching he the lights the to see. Row easily. I was just looking to see whether he jumped the start. It was so good. He hadn't. And you see the comparison. Malia getting the sort of start that you would expect. He was fairly nicely away, Malia. Markov obviously very slow, but look how far ahead Latifi got in the opening meters. Further back behind, Oli Roland getting very close indeed as he went past Markov. Li uh, King, rather, there out on the outside, which became the inside, the switchback nature of the circuit. King just switching back, Oli Roland having to get out of it. On board with Sergio Canamassas as he left the line. And there's the staller. It's Ralph Boschong. Nothing in that and good reactions from everyone to not have a fairly big accident. Not bad for Bouchard because now he's told, but with safety car he can... Uh, safety car in. Ah, it's in, it has pulled over, so Boschard does not get the advantage, but Latifi, well, he nearly won the feature race in GP2 here last year. He's in the mood, only rolling all over the road on the AstroTurf, trying to get a move completed. So one down's getting a dream restart. And the other one, not so much. You see him weaving about, trying to get some life into the tyres. King and Leclerc, very close together. Can Leclerc go around the outside? Wow, that was committed from Charles Leclerc. That was one confident move. Was perfect this overtake because it breaks so deep or really wide. And then he left the space to the guide on the inside. So really well done from Leclerc that he showed how good is him on the overtake. Well, he gets himself up to seventh position, but that was so impressively late on the brakes and smooth out of the corner. The Monagas driver, who really is a little bit of a sensation at the moment, he's had two poles, he's been on the podium in every race so far, and he's won a sprint and feature race in Formula 2. He, of course, as well, as if he needs any more accolades, is the reigning GP3 champion. So let's look further down the field there. We've got Roberto Meri standing in for Stefano Coletti and chasing the Rapax, but it's Markelov on the move. It's King who doesn't have the pace at this stage, and you see very close indeed, Leclerc to running into the back of the car in front, and very close indeed to contact between King, but Markelov will be so frustrated with himself, and he's got to fight his way through exactly what he did there, taking away the position to go up to eighth. Not the balance the King needs from the car at the moment, or so it seems. And this time, Norman Nato is all over the back of him as they head on to lap number four. So the gap is a second. Gustav Malia is trying to keep Nicholas Latifi, two men that have never won in this machinery before, trying to become a winner in Formula 2. The fastest lap for Nicolas Latifi. It's going to be interesting to see after the initial grippy phase of the tyre, who can make it work when it begins to degrade. It begins to degrade, of course, from the very first lap, but they don't have to worry about that too much until the very end. Different track temperatures of the one they were running in yesterday. Track temperature is 30 degrees today. It was in the 40s yesterday, and the track incident involving Galeo and Canamassas will be investigated as we focus on Ollie Rowland. I need... Latifi needs to pull away, needs to make the gap, needs to pull away from Malia to give to the other driver the uh, thinking that is unbeatable today because I'm worried for him, Giotto, Roland, Albon and then Leclerc yesterday, they look quicker than him, so Latifi try to be focusing on the lap time because you need to lead this race. Very, very 
confident into the breaking zone. You can see Oli Roland nowhere near his capacity of breaking into turn number 10. A lot of confidence with the DRS. He's got Luca Giotto in front of him. These two were racing to such spectacular effect in Bahrain on the last lap of the sprint race one month ago. They're rejoined in battle once again. And